Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. And um, uh, welcome to Entrepreneurship 5. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this class. Um, I just spent three months redesigning the class. And, um, and I finished uh, my final tweaks uh, about 45 seconds ago. So just before I hit record, I was updating the material. And so the reason why I updated this class had been running brilliantly for years and uh, with minor tweaks. Uh, uh, but over the last couple of semesters, I sort of noticed that some of my students were struggling uh, with buying the second book. So we've got, there There used to be two books. There was uh, Who Owns the Ice House, which is brilliant, but now it's free to students, right? It used to be 15 bucks. And then the second book was probably the, it was incredibly poorly written. It really was not a well done book, but it had great stories. And it was 10 bucks. And you needed to, you could only get it on the Kindle unless you wanted to pay 75 bucks for the book. And it was $10, you buy it on the Kindle. And while there's free Kindle software, it was, it obviously represented a barrier. And I could see my student participation like fall off a cliff. So I completely redesigned the class. And um, so that um, you don't have to go buy that second book. So now this class is 100% free. And you got to pay tuition if you, unless you're getting financial aid. But otherwise, there are no additional costs associated, uh, no, no book costs associated with it. So I mean, there was really, the reason why I redesigned the class was, uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, is the use of AI. And, I, and I'm increasingly seeing this, this whole chat GPT thing popping up and students using it to try to uh, do some of my homework, not just mine, but a, a lot of homework. And so I've had to try it up reword some of my assignments to, uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, not so that I can uh, work around chat GPT, but just make it a heck of a lot harder. So if the phrasing sounds funky, it's on purpose, unless I made a mistake, in which case you know, that, that can occur. So final, final thing I want to mention about this is that, you know, just like buying uh, the first year of a new car, right, the company introduces a new model year of a car, the car's got problems, right? Some things are going to break and some things are going to seem weird and the instrument panel is not going to work. Same thing. This is the first time I'm rolling this class. So I'm not saying you're guinea pigs because you're not. You're human beings. However, I'm going to treat you a little bit like a guinea pig because if the class runs great, then I will do some fine tuning in the spring and then I'll have a final beautiful course that I can deliver at no cost to uh, no book cost to my students, but man, th there might be something funky that pops up and maybe the dates will be wrong or maybe something will be misspelled because I was tweaking this 45 seconds before I pushed uh, record. So just keep that in mind. So be patient. And um, the reality is, is we're this is going to be a big class. We may have up to 75 students in this class, which means that, you know, doing away with that book, just save th this class 750 bucks. And, uh, and I would rather have the class be a little weird uh, uh, and maybe some of the dates be wrong or something misspelled and save the class 750 bucks and have it be perfect and you guys have to pay a bunch of dough. So that's just sort of my thinking, right? So um, I really thought I could do this in 10 minutes, but I've already wasted three out, three minutes and 50 seconds babbling. So let me get busy here. So I'm going to give you a little short story on me, uh, give you some course objectives, grading, using Canvas, et cetera, right? So I'm an entrepreneur. I start stuff. Uh, uh, even now, I've got uh, uh, buddies, and we we get together, and we uh, we are constantly kicking around new ideas. Last last week, my buddy Alan and I we were just sort of kicking around what we thought would be this brilliant idea, and it, man, on the surface, it just sounds like wow, this could be just a lot of fun, right? And so um, I start stuff, uh, and I and I, I did for about thirty years, and I still start stuff. I still try to help my students to start stuff. I'll be in class tomorrow encouraging my students to start stuff. And um, I think it's a, an exciting uh, path. So I sort of bring that perspective. And so I've started 10 companies, sold three of them. We've had countless failures. They're not really mostly really our failures. They're just sort of like, we just stop. We just realize it's not going to happen. And so we, we have this, you know, this, this thing we call fail fast. 
So we try to get out quickly, stop spending money, stop spending time, let's move on. Before that, I, I spent quite a few years in, in corporate finance. Um, even as an entrepreneur, I spent time here because um, when you're not starting something, you, know, you still got to eat. And so uh, I would help companies go public and help companies raise millions of dollars. And so I understand how mergers and acquisitions work. And so I spent a little bit of time doing that. Um, I'm the former president of the National Society of Hispanic MBAs and uh, St. Mary's MBA, go Gales. But I'm a Hayward kid, right? So I went to Chabot College, uh, Hayward Adult School, Tennyson and La Vista. And then Roos. Let's not forget Roos. And um, although sometimes I like to forget Roos. So uh, you notice the Hayward Adult School part in there, right? And um, so I, I am not the traditional... Uh, professor uh, uh, at Chabot, right? I did not uh, come out of high school and go to Berkeley and then work diligently and get my PhD. Uh, and now I'm teaching. That's not my, that wasn't my path, right? Or get my master's degree and then get my path. That that wasn't my, my path at all, right? So I dropped out of Tennyson High in 11th grade. And um, uh, there's a bunch of reasons for that. You know, my uh, Pops from Puerto Rico, English is a second language. Mom, a group in the Oakland Projects, uh, 10th grade education. So I'm not one of those Latinos that grew up where their parents immigrated here and they're like, you're going to college, right? Where we see all, hear those stories. You know, my dad was like, you need to learn a trade. And because if you learn a trade, then, then you can eat. And Pop was much more concerned with us just being able to like survive. And, um, and so this whole education thing just really wasn't that big of a deal. I spent time as a security guard in Castro Valley, worked in a warehouse uh, in my youth. Uh, there was about 14 months where I was homeless, like I didn't have an address. Thankfully, there was uh, the warehouse I worked in. They had a, an, an office, a small office that they weren't using. And I was I would like throw a couch in there and crash in there when I needed. One of the reasons why I came to Chabot College was to take a shower. It sounds horrible, uh, but that was the truth. Two years, I had uh, no car. I just rode a mountain bike, and um, I was fit. Those were those were horrible days, but you know, uh, being young and fit is always a fun thing. Um, Saturday morning, uh, back in 1986, I took a Saturday morning microeconomics class, and for some reason, like all the lights went on in my head. Like, you know, you drop out of high school, or you don't do well academically, and you sort of feel, you know, dumb, right? You sort of feel like, gosh, I couldn't even get out of high school. And so there's that stigma that you sort of you know put on yourself. And, uh, and and that absolutely was happening with me is that I just sort of felt like, geez, all right, uh, maybe I'm not the smartest guy, right? And it, and it turned out that uh, I learned differently. And economics was one of those uh, areas where sort of how my brain processes data uh, was beneficial. And so for some reason, this microeconomics class Four hours, Saturday morning, nine o'clock to one in the afternoon, and all the lights went on, and it was it was brilliant. Like I earned the first A, like ever in the history of me. And I'm talking going going back to like junior high school, and um, and so it was very exciting. And so that that sort of changed everything, and um, uh, uh, which is why I come to Chabot College to teach, right? You know, for me, uh, uh, you know, I really feel like my existence in life is to come turn on some light bulbs and make sure that somebody, my students have the opportunity to at least sort of, you know, get their arms around what they might want to do or, or uh, find something that uh, helps them feel like, yeah, this is my jam. Right. Uh, but it's important that other than that, a, I got in economics, I think I got A's in all the economics classes. And there was three of them at the time, general macro micro. I didn't do very well at all. As a matter of fact, I just went to go register. Uh, recently to go to, to, to take classes at the gym and uh, great gym. If you're on campus, you need to go to the gym. Uh, it's a really nice gym and the, the coaches there take good care of you. So I had to go register, except that I was on academic probation from like you know, 1987. So talk about embarrassed. Right? I had to go to counseling and see if they would sort of hook me up. Thankfully they didn't, um, you know, give me too much guff about it, but I was, um, probation for a little bit. So I didn't do great while I was here, but even after Chabot, right, I didn't complete my degree until I was 38 years old, got my master's degree when I was 43. 
But 1987, I started my first company. This is all like right around the Chabot time, 1980. I got hired by Morgan Stanley. I mean, that doesn't happen, right? But I had learned enough and I had hustle. And um, you know, a few years later, I bought my first house. A couple of years after that, I joined my first technology startup, bought my first Porsche. And I mentioned that because you know, when you're 14 and you sort of begin to picture what is success. You know, for me, it was the red Porsche that was on a, you know, a poster that was on my wall. 2001, I sold my first company. And all of this really happened. It just sort of like, it was like this doll, the dominoes were falling after I came to Chabot. And so I mentioned this for two reasons. You know, one, um, I'm not the traditional professor. And so I don't approach these classes in a traditional way. Um, and the other thing is you, you could call me because I know things are going to happen. And uh, you're not going to surprise me. You're not going to disappoint me. You're not, you're not going to have to worry about being judged at all by me. I get it. Life's hard. And sometimes shit hits the fan. And when it does, um, I'm the guy you could call and go, it's happening. Can, what can we do? And we figure it out. You know, students text me or call me or, or email me with issues. And my first response is, what, what can I do? And so I share my background a little bit because I'm not the traditional academic. I'm 90% I'm hustle. 10% uh, academic. And, um, uh, and so uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. So fun stuff. Uh, I like extra credit. And the first thing you're going to see when you log into Canvas is this big module called extra credit. So here's what I'd like to do is I like during Thanksgiving break for people to go do stuff. You get the whole week off in this class, right? Go do something fun. I'm all about travel. So there are some rules, right? I give you 100 extra credit points. That's a lot. That's almost the full uh, uh, midterm or final paper, right? Those are worth 150 points each. So it's like two-thirds. You can go uh, uh, do something fun, right? But the rules are you must go on a challenging trip. I have students every semester like, how about Vegas? No, not Vegas. Hey, can I go see my cousin in LA? No. Yes, you can but no, you're not going to get any extra credit points. I want you to go somewhere where there's a passport required, you know, and it must be challenging. So if you're Latino, I'm sorry, you can't tell me you're going to go to Nicaragua because that's where your people are from. You can't go do that, right? If you are Asian, you cannot tell me you're going to go to Hong Kong or Vietnam or go see your family in Cambodia. That is not challenging, right? So if you're Latino, you got to go to Asia or Europe. And if you're going to go to Europe, I'd prefer, don't tell me Paris because... Uh, go to Paris if you've never been, but I'd much prefer you go to Prague, right? If you're Asian, go to Latin America or Europe. A few years ago, I had a, uh, a small group of Asian students go to Colombia. They came back different people. They had the most fun ever. And um, if you're white, you cannot go to Europe. You can uh, only go to Asia or Latin America. I'd love it. Go to Latin America. Um, uh, maybe not Costa Rica, but go to Colombia, right? Go to Uruguay. Uh, Go to Peru. Peru is just rocking right now. So much exciting stuff going on down there. Uh, and Black or African American, you can go anywhere. And no disrespect, right? My my kids are all adopted. They're all African American. And so as a result, I have done significant research on, on the uh, African American community. And the African American community is not known for traveling. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. And uh, But if you are Black, go anywhere. I don't care where you go. And uh, get out of the U.S. And um, so I've got some options. A fun one. And it's cheap, right? Relatively inexpensive. Go to Vancouver. Now, yeah, Vancouver is like the U.S. light, right? You know, they're like, it's like going to the U.S., but everybody's nicer. But it's still a foreign country. you got to have a passport. And so don't jump on a plane. Get on a train. The train goes right out of Oakland. Uh, go, just go on the train. Stay in a hostel. Unless you're old, don't stay in a hostel because then that's creepy. Uh, and But the hostels are great, right? You can stay in like a 4.7 star rated hostel. Uh, and yeah, they look like the picture, right? You know, they're, you're know, you going to go in, you're going to get a bed, you're going to get a, a small uh, a locker to put your stuff in, and you're off to the races. It doesn't matter. You're going to be there for five days. You want to go see stuff. Um, uh, the, the ride up is amazing. When you get to the hostel, you're going to wake up in the morning early uh, and you're going to hear five or six different languages because Vancouver is that sort of a city. And uh, you have the time of your life. You know, but if you want to step it up a little bit, Istanbul, this is my favorite trip ever. So I took my boys, um, 
you know, just uh, it was a couple months before COVID. And we had the time of our life in Istanbul. And Istanbul's struggling right now. Uh, you know, not just Istanbul, but all of Turkey, because they've got inflation that's like you know, 112% or something. So they're, they've got some issues, but great time to go put the dollar because they really like that dollar. You can get a pretty good deal there. And Istanbul is brilliant. I mean, it's a Muslim uh, a country, but it, it, it's um, uh, 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 so you're going to wake up hearing the call to prayer, right? And you're going to hear the call to prayer throughout the, door, the day, number of mosques. And uh, but it's also got sort of a European flavor and and uh, and, and uh, vibe to it. What a wonderful place to go visit! Seoul, South Korea, about sixteen hundred bucks. Air hotel. You're not staying in a pretty place. You're going to get you know a bed, maybe in a closet, right? You're not going to get anything fancy, but you don't want to have anything fancy. You want to go get out on the street, right, and go experience everything that is Seoul. Japan's. Uh, I think it's a little bit more than fifteen hundred bucks now. This is uh, about a month ago. Same thing, but I think what I quoted this, you were staying in Shinjuku or just off of Shinjuku, right, in the neighborhood. And once again, it was like a closet with a bed and something that kind of resembled a toilet, and you were off to the races, you know. So this is not the time of your life when you should be like, oh, I really want to stay in the Four Seasons. You know, wait, wait another 20 years and you go stay in the Four Seasons. But right now, you just need to go, like, go see the planet a little bit. So I'll give you fat points if you go do this. Every semester, my students are like, I'd love to, but I don't have any money. Ah, baloney. Sell some of your stuff, right? Go into your closet. You've got clothes, shoes, games, game systems, et cetera. Yeah, stuff you just don't use. you got those old vans. You know the old vans? Clean them up a little bit. Uh, those are still worth like 25 bucks. People pay 25 bucks for old vans, even if they're a little beat. As a matter of fact, if they're a little beat, they might spend more. Uh, old game systems, you're not going to play the Wii, right? Heck, you're probably not going to play with your Switch anymore. Get ready to sell it. Go on eBay. Go on Facebook Marketplace. Right. Go to any of these other places. Go sell that stuff. Get a side hustle. You know you're sleeping right now. It's like what is it? It's like nine twenty in the morning. All of you are sleeping. I'm up. Get out of bed and go get a side hustle. You want to make you want to make enough money to go on a great trip right now. Go around your neighborhood with a little printout on pieces of paper. I will clean your gutters in your house. Right. So houses have gutters that collect water, and uh, but we are expecting to have, but who knows? We're supposed to have a pretty wet winter again, right? It's supposed to be pretty wet and gnarly, and and uh, but people's gutters are gnarly. So you go up there, you need a ladder, go up and scoop the crap out of the gutter and put it into a garbage bag, put it into their garbage, and you'll pay 150, 200 bucks, right? I've got gutters. If somebody wants to come clean my gutters, I've got gut. I've got like a garden growing out of one of them. It's actually quite embarrassing. I keep hoping my boys will go up there and uh, clean it, but they haven't. Start a GoFundMe. You know, people contribute these all the time, right? Hey, I'm a business student and uh, and I want to take my first international trip. Help me, right? Uh, and stop eating out. You know, this is this is the part that just drives me nuts. So we have food in our house. I've got uh, uh, three boys here. And um uh, I'm like, okay, I I will make a sandwich to go to work. I'll make myself a little peanut butter and jelly, or maybe I'll make a little turkey cheese, right? We'll make a little sandwich to take to the office. They won't. They would rather go to the cafeteria and spend like $16 to go get like a burger, fries, and you know maybe uh, Arizona iced tea. One of them now is like, oh, they have sushi. I'm like, man, what is it like being rich? You know, Stop eating out. Make a sandwich for God's sake. Have... Uh, eat some leftovers. Ask your mom if you could put something in a baggie to take to school to eat so you don't have to like go eat out. Stop eating out. You're going to have so much money. You won't know what to do. All right, enough preaching. Course objectives. So really, there's a bunch of course objectives. I'll let you guys review this when you want. But the, for me, it really is, is. Let's try to get into the psychology of, of an entrepreneur. What is it that makes these people tick? What does that make some different and unique? And I'll give you a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, a spoiler alert, right? Nothing. There's nothing about them that's unique. They're, they're just like you. And uh, the difference is that they found something that stoked them and they gave it a go. One book, Cool and Ice House, free. I give you the links in the canvas. Um, uh, great book. Uh, I think you're really, really, really going to enjoy it. There's a couple. You know, it's just set 1958 Mississippi River Delta. Uh, a black man named Uncle Cleve who owns uh, the most important business in the area. I mean, it's just amazing. Great book. 
uh, simple to read, one chapter a week. Uh, you're not going to kill yourself reading this book. I'm going to hurt you a little bit more in other, other areas, but you're not going to kill yourself reading this book. Points. So we've got about 15 writing assignments. We'll get into those in a minute. Discuss and comments. You get a midterm paper and a final paper. That's it, right? So there's not an extraordinary amount of work, but there's work, right? Grades, you see, give me 823 or more, you get the A. I love A's. Get that 548 or less, and I, I, I'll give you the F. I give Fs every semester, and neither of us are happy about it. Uh, but I will have talked to you about it, and um, you'll have tried to convince me that you can catch up, and then I will give you more time, and and, and then you won't catch up, and then maybe you take the class next semester. I'm on campus four days a week, uh, and I'm available all the time. I was just swapping texts with a student uh, this morning. And uh, But uh, if you're on campus, I'm in room 1609, which is a classroom in the 1600 building, Monday, Wednesday, for just a half hour uh, each day. Because then what I do is I do my office hours, and then I go to the gym. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, I'm in my class from 11.45 until, I don't know, 1.15, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Depends what's going on. Stop in. Come see me. Come say hello, right? If I can help you, don't hesitate. I also do Zoom hours from 10.30 to 11.30 on Fridays. But what you need to do is, like, send me a text. I don't just open Zoom and look at Zoom. And, um, uh, you know, for an hour. Because that's just boring. And also, by the way, it never works for the students. So normally students will hit me up like, oh, I just missed your office hours. Can I talk to you? It's kind of like, yeah, right. Let's talk now. So I tend to be a lot more flexible, but I've got to put up some hours here. This is the way to get me. Uh, send me a text because uh, I tend to respond pretty quick. I mean, I'll be uh, sitting on the couch and I'll respond to texts all night. And um, or you can send me an email. Email, you may not get a response until the next morning, but texts, um, Unless you're not text, if you text me 11 o'clock at night, you're not going to get a text until, or return until the next morning. I go to bed at, I don't know, 8.30 or something and read. Path to success, right? If you want to succeed in this class, just do the work. Um, uh, and don't fall behind because catching up is really hard. This is a 18-week class that we do in eight weeks. And so there, there's some hustle uh, uh, required here. And it's also an online class, which means that there's a fair amount of video work that you've got to be prepared to do. So don't fall behind. You start falling behind, man. It's just kind of like everything goes to, uh, everything gets nasty. Be nice. There's going to be a lot of discussion between the between you and other uh, students. Just be nice to each other. And don't cheat. You know, let, let, you know the, this, this, this whole AI thing is now a, a huge problem. And here's, here's, what I, here's what I need, right? We need to get our arms around this. And yeah, chat GPT is, is cheating, right? You know, I've actually heard some students go, oh, no, no, it's blah, blah, blah. You can rationalize anything you want. But at the end of the day, if somebody else is writing your paper, that's cheating. Will you get caught? There's a pretty good chance you won't, right? They're getting smarter. It's getting better at writing. And unless I, I mean, and I'm not going to have the time to go through and diligently look at what your writing style was in week one versus week four. I mean, it's so the students are getting away with it. But, you know, before you cheat, I need you to ask yourself, why are you here? Right? You know, I would like to think that you are here because you want to learn stuff. And, and so I think it's important you know that getting an A in this class doesn't mean squat in five years. I, mean, I have hired well over 100 people. I mean, I've sat in interviews and interviewed well over 1,000 people. When I'm in the room and I'm talking to these people and they're talking to me about their academic success, but you could see, man, they didn't learn squat. And I need people, uh, uh, the marketplace needs people that have the ability to think on their own to think critically, to form thoughts and have opinions that are their own. That's the value of taking a class like this. When I'm asking you to compare and contrast, you know, two different opinions, I'm asking you to use your brain. And if you're going to use something like chat GPT, you are not using your brain, right? You're going to be using AI. And so don't give me this, oh, but AI is the future. And if I could use, learn how to use it now, that's ah, crap. You, we both know it's crap. Don't make that argument because it's worthless. And so if you're going to cheat because you're too busy, then take a step back. Don't take the class. 
Because if you're not here to learn stuff, then I mean, what's the point, right? Because I'm telling you, an A in this class is irrelevant in five years. The only thing that, the only way this class is going to help you five years from now is it's going to help you think about stuff you hadn't thought about before and then articulate it in a way that maybe you're not used to doing. That's it, right? The A is worthless. All right, let's take a look at Canvas. So class is pretty simple. Everything is in a module. Wait a minute. Wrong class. How about if I open the right class? Here we go, Entrepreneurship 5. So everything is, is in a, a module. So if you are going on a computer, you're great, because as soon as you log in, this is what you see, right? Uh, uh, but if you're going on your phone, which I just, I hope you're not, a bunch of you will, but um, uh, it, you, know, you need to click the modules link. So when you open up um, uh, Canvas on the, your app, you got to click the modules because that's where everything is, right? So for example, I say start here. This video will be right up here. Uh, campus resources. This is a lot of support stuff. Look at all this fun extra credit. Woo! Right? Fun stuff. By the way, uh, this is connected to this. So this says use the student interview. This is that interview, right? Week one. This is important. I'm hoping you actually stuck out and you were patient during this time. Um, yeah, there we go. Week one, you must do these by the deadline, right? You must complete these assignments by the deadline. It's a right to is also due on October 15th. You must complete them by the deadline or I will drop you. And I have to do that. This class is just huge. And, um, and so I don't, I am not going to have a whole lot of patience um, for, oh, I got busy. Oh, I didn't realize class started. I'm emailing this. I'm putting this notice in announcements and I'm putting this in um, uh, all the way at the top. It says start here. I will be sending out a note saying, hey, welcome to Entrepreneurship 5. So there's going to be multiple communications with you. And so there's really no excuse why you would not have uh, uh, gone in and for, done the first couple of assignments. So if you don't do them, you will be dropped. Don't don't text me, text me back and say, oh, I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. I can't do it. Not this semester, right? So the assignments are, are pretty simple, right? So this one is, tell me about an experience you've had with entrepreneurship. You click the link. Tell me, give me something. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for a whole lot of words. I'm not looking. Just tell me, what experience did you have? Maybe you had an uncle. For me, I had two uncles. One on my mom's side, one on my dad's side. My, on my mom's side, he owned a donut shop, and it was great. And because uh, that was like my first real job. And then my other uncle owned a pizza place in Hayward. And that was my second real job, right? It was great. And, and I got to see, you know, what it was like for these guys to go through. But then that's the softball, right? And then this movie, they start to get a little bit better, right? You know, this one. Uh, obviously, right one has everything to do with the book, right? Pick three. And um, how were they different to like Steve Jobs? And so there'll be a Steve Jobs video in here that you will, that you'll have to watch, right? And so it's not here yet. It will be. That's why I said I, I was I, 45 seconds after I uh, thought I finished the class. Um, I pushed the record button. So I'll get the Jobs uh, one in there. And then this one is... Uh, uh, has everything to do with the videos. So you you got to watch the videos. You don't have to watch them, but what you could do is put them on, put in your earbuds, go for a walk, walk your dog. Your dog would love that, right? Or put on your buds uh, when you're at work and listen because you got to be able to observe this. So right two has everything to do with this video here, right? Migrapreneurship, right? Uh, immigrants or people that have migrated to another place and they become an entrepreneur. It's almost always out of, uh, out of as desperate need. It's not like that's a great idea for the most part. It was kind of like, I got to eat and nobody will give me a job. So this is how it's broken down, right? Uh, every week, you're going to have a couple of writing assignments and then a discussion. And then, you know, we've got in the video that's posted, there's this whole debate uh, uh, about what, what is an entrepreneur? You know, what, what is it? And so there's a discussion component to this. So you must post your comment by Friday, and then you must post on two of your classmate posts by Sunday. 
it's important you understand that if you only give your post and you don't comment on two Snowden posts, you only get a third of the points. And there's 30 points. So you only get 10. So it's not like you feel like you did half the work, you get half the points. It's not. Your post is important, but getting your post up there on time so that the other students can interact with it is more valuable, to be perfectly honest with you, which is why there's so many points um, connected to it. So that's the class. We sort of run through uh, uh, you know, every week. We got a little a little something that every week there's going to be uh, uh, different videos that have to do with uh, different aspects of the book. Like chapter two is all about opportunity. So there's uh, discussions and writing assignments that are connected to that chapter in the book, but they're also connected to uh, the videos. So you got to watch the videos and you got to read the book. And um, some of the videos are an hour, right? And, or some of them are 20 minutes. And, uh, but if you were in a classroom, you'd have to listen to me lecture for three hours anyway. I know some of you are like, oh my God, I couldn't do it. I know, but this way you've only got to listen to me this once and then maybe I'll pop in before the midterm. All right, so um, this is Entrepreneurship 5. Um, expect it to be a little funky, right? You know, like for example, I need to get that Steve Jobs, uh, those videos in there. If you see something, if you're like, uh, hey Miguel, um, uh, what Steve Jobs video are you referring to? I'll be like, oh man, I forgot that one. Because why? Because you're the guinea pigs. And uh, you are going to help me make this class better. And, and I'm going to pay you 10 bucks to do it. You're not going to have to go buy a book that you'll never read again. Um, enjoy some of the extra credit. Think about doing a, a trip over um, Thanksgiving. I do recommend Istanbul. What a great place to go. It's still very safe. And uh, you know, go challenge yourself a little bit. If you've got questions, suggestions, comments, complaints, or remarks, you know how to find me. Peace.